what do you value? What you spend your money on is what you value. This is where actions speak louder than words. So what do you value? What are you spending money on? Fast food, soda pop, lottery tickets, the latest shoes, clothes, or handbags, subscriptions to things you don't use, books that you may or may not read. If you say that you value health and fitness, but your actions are that you eat fast food often and you don't work out because you don't have time, are you living in alignment with your values? If you say you want to retire early and be financially free, yet you're not saving money for the future or spending all your money each month on feel-good items, are you living in alignment with your values and goals? Your actions and money scripts are not just in your head. They are passed on to your kids. What do your kids see you buying? What are you buying your kids? Are you buying things that are of value to you or to their future? Or are you satisfying an immediate need or want? What are you saying about money? Do you say that you never have enough or that you can't afford that or it's too expensive? Are you constantly stressed about not having enough money to pay your bills? Or do you say, it's okay, I'll just work more to get more money? Whatever you are saying about money, the value of money, your attitudes and thoughts around it, they're all being ingrained in your brain and, and through your behaviors and are passed down to your kids. I recently listened to a podcast that had John C. Maxwell on it and that how he talked about how his dad handled the question about getting paid for doing chores. Now, if you don't know John C. Maxwell, he's an American author, speaker, and pastor who has written many books, primarily focusing on leadership. So his dad told him that paying kids to do chores is a terrible idea. You do chores because you're part of a family and that I don't pay you to be a part of a family. And by the way, by the time you're born, you were already you already owed your mother nine months of room and board. So go take out the garbage. And why would I put money value on you taking out the garbage unless I wanted you to be a garbage man? Those are some interesting words and response to the question, why can't I get paid for doing chores? Instead, John Maxwell's dad paid him and his siblings to read books. Starting in the seventh grade, they were paid what it cost his dad to buy the book, to read it. The books were chosen by his dad. They were required to read 30 minutes every day. At the dinner table then, they all talked about what they learned that day and what they were reading about. So what happened? John's brother was a millionaire before graduating from college. John himself had the 10th largest nonprofit congregation in America before he was 30. By the time his sister was 27, she ran a hospital. John says life is not complicated. What you need to learn, you can find in books. Reading is the most effective way to get information about almost everything. And is key, it is the key ingredient in learning for school, work, and pleasure. Don't expect education or school to provide you everything you need to be successful. You have to be a lifelong learner. There are plenty and plenty of books to teach you about everything you need to know to be successful in anything that you want to do. All you need to learn can be found in books. So what are some of those benefits of reading? Well, think of reading as brain fitness, like going to a brain gym. Reading boosts 
imagination, communication, memory, concentration, problem solving, and it reduces cognitive decline and stress, and it leads to a longer life. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want great cognitive ability in their later years? But reading also supports mental health, including boosting self-esteem, increasing empathy, and mitigating anxiety and depression. Reading can also help you become a better friend and leader as you can view life from different perspectives. In 2015, John Maxwell came across an article in Success Magazine that named the top 25 books to read on success. Guess what? He had read 19 of them before graduating from high school. Like he was born in the late 40s. And just think of this. He read 19 books on success before graduating from high school. And the other six hadn't been written yet. How many books have you read since graduating from high school or college? You know what? The majority of the people barely touch another book. My goal is to read a book a month. And I'm usually on target for it for the year. So what do you value? And how does what you buy reflect your values? Well, I can say that I value my health and wellness. I love to learn new things. I love everything, personal development. I make meals from scratch, from whole ingredients. I invest in fitness equipment and programs and health monitors. I invest in books and programs to better my mind, body, and this, my spirit. I mean, I have a ton of books and many of them I have read and many are still waiting to be read, but all of them are personal development books or books teaching me about a topic that I'm interested in, in the moment. And I'm really happy to share what I learn with others. And you know that if you've been on my podcast, because I occasionally do book summaries here in my podcast. And I also just recently gave my daughters some books. Um, for instance, my daughter who's getting married soon asked for books instead of cards for her bridal shower. And I gave her a copy of the book, The Strength to Shift, in which I'm a contributing author. So if you haven't got that, it'll be in the show notes. And I gave her another book. And I also gave her a binder where I printed off 15 summaries of books that I have read and taken notes on because... I like to take notes on my personal development books that I read. It was one way that I could share my love of reading with her. And if she ever wants to read the entire book, I have a copy she can borrow. But going back to what John Maxwell's dad said, I really agree with him. I don't believe in paying my kids to do chores around the house. It is part of learning how to maintain a house and be part of a family because everyone contributes to making the house dirty and a mess. So I believe everybody needs to help clean it up. It's just a responsibility. But I really haven't thought about paying my kids to read the books that I think would benefit them. It's an interesting idea. I know I've suggested books in the past and I've even given like all my older girls, uh, Jamie Kern Lima's book Worthy when it came out. Not sure if they read it. If they haven't, I probably should have paid them to read it and have a book club and a book study about it. Anyway, what you spend money on is what you value. So what are you spending money on? Take a look at what you have spent money on this past month. Track it. Track all your spending, even the cash, especially the cash. What did you buy? Why did you buy it? And what did you buy that aligns with your values and goals? Did it align? If your spending does not align with your values or goals, make a plan to get in more alignment and take action. Connect the two. Connect your money with your values and take actions toward that. Then ask yourself, what you can do to help guide your kids, if you have them, to develop skills necessary for them to be successful. Maybe that is paying them to read some great books. 